and the real functions you have seen up to now, one real value is always mapped to one image, not to more than one image. If you have complex functions though, one value in the domain can be mapped to multiple values in the codomain, which makes some complex functions quite tricky. Roots exhibit, exhibit this multivaluedness. And apart from that, complex roots behave exactly the same as their real counterparts, as we will learn in this video. So, what are roots? So, what is, for example, the square root of 2 if you just look at the real numbers? Well, if you have x equals square root of 2, that means that x is the solution of one of the solutions of the equation x squared equals 2. That's how you define the square root of 2. And for example, if you have the cube root of 8, uh, x equals the cube root of 8, what do you mean? Well, you mean that x is the solution of the equation x cubed equals 8. So that is what roots are, in fact. They are solutions of uh, polynomial equations. And that is how we will define our complex roots as well. So similarly complex, the number w root equals the nth root of z, some other complex number, that means that w is a solution of the equation w to the power n equals z. So you will know the z and you are looking for the w. So you want to solve equations like w to the power n, w squared, w cubed equals some known complex number z. And that's the way how you can find your roots. So how are we going to do that? So exam for example, find the third root of z equals minus 1 minus i. So our z equals now minus 1 minus i. We want to find the w's. That means that our w's satisfy the equation w cubed equals z, where z is known, equals minus 1 minus i. Now, how do we do that? Well, first of all, we write the z into polar form. So first we will write z in polar form, and then we will write w in polar form. So first step is to write z in polar form. Well, that's easy, that's what we know, because we know what z is. It is equals minus 1 minus i. So we use the exponential notation. It's uh, radius, uh, it's norm r equals square root of 2, and its argument equals minus 3 pi over 4. And we use the general argument, so we write it as exponent of i times minus 3 pi over 4 plus some multiple of 2 pi. Now we have written the z into polar form. The next step is to write your root w into polar form, but you don't know what it is. Well, you just write w equals r to the power i theta, so w cubed equals r to the power i e to the power i theta cubed equals r cubed e to the power. 3i theta. That has to be equal to z, so compare. Then we see one complex number in polar form equals another complex number in polar form. Well, that is, those are only equal <coughs> if their norms are equal and if their arguments are equal. So norms have, st have to be equal, so the r cubed has to be equal to the square root of 2, so that's what you see over here. And the arguments have to be equal, so the 3i theta, so 3 theta, has to be equal to the argument over here, minus 3 pi over 4 plus k times 2 pi. So what do we <coughs> get? We solve for the r. r cubed equals 2 to the power 1 half. Well, that's easy. r is just real, so r will be 2 to the power, two to the power 1 over 6. And the argument is always the tricky part. We have 3 theta equals minus 3 pi over 4 plus a multiple of 2, multiple of two pi. So for theta, we have to divide by 3. We get a minus pi over 4 plus a multiple of 2 pi over 3. And now you see you get a few different thetas which all solve the equation w cubed equals z. So you have not one solution of this equation, you will find multiple solutions, so you will find multiple roots of one complex number z. If we draw them, uh, <coughs> we can take uh, k to 0, then we get our uh, root w0 equals 2 to the power 1 over 6, and then we just have e to the power minus pi over 4. So that w0 is over here if you draw it in the complex plane. It is on the circle, this radius 2 to the power 1 over 6, and it has argument minus pi over 4. Then we continue to w1, we pick k equals 1. 
then we get the same norm, but we get as our argument minus pi over 4 plus 1 times 2 pi over 3 equals e to the power i 5 pi over 12. So w1 sits approximately over here. There we have our w1. And then we can continue because we can take any k we like. So we take w2, we plug in k equals 2. Oh, this is going to take a long time. We can take any k we like. So there we go. Uh, we get a, a minus power 4 plus 2 times 2 times pi over 3. So minus pi over 4 plus 4 pi over 3 yields uh, as argument 13 pi over 12. And we have our w2 over there. And we continue, we plug in now, k equals 3, then we get over here, same norm again, but now it's argument minus pi over 4 plus 3 times uh, 2 pi over 3, so plus, two, uh, uh, so plus 2 pi. Hey, and now something nice happens, because we are 2 pi further with our argument, our w3 is again at the same location as w0. And if we will continue, our W4 get, comes here, W5 gets here, and W6 gets again over there. And we get round and round. So in fact, we do not need to take all values of k, we only need to take k equals 0, 1, and 2. Then we find our three solutions. So our uh, third, or, uh, our third uh, uh, root has, there are, has three solutions, so we have in fact three third roots. And that makes sense, of course. We have a 30 order equation and we find three solutions. So, next example, find the fourth root of unity. What does this mean, the roots of unity? Well, the roots of unity are the numbers, so fourth roots are the numbers w satisfy w to the power 4 equals 1. This unity means that you're taking the roots of 1. So, what do we get? We have to solve w to the power 4 equals 1. First, our z is 1, so first I write z in polar form. Well, that's easy, of course, because it's just norm 1 and argument 0. Then you write the w into polar form as r times e to the power i theta, so w to the power 4 equals r to the power 4 e to the power 4 i theta. Uh, <coughs> then you know that this is equal to e to the power i times k times 2 pi, uh, you look at the norms first, r to the power 4 equals 1, and then you look at the arguments, 4 times theta equals a multiple of 2 pi, then you solve the equation for r first, you get r equals 1, because notice this r is a norm, it's some positive number, so r equals 1, always only one solution, and for the thetas we get any multiple of 1 half pi. So what will be our solutions? For w0, we take k equals 0, so our theta will be equal to 0. w1, our theta will be a half pi, so our solutions will be e to the power i times a half pi equals i. w2, we take k equals 2, we get as argument e to the power i, 1 half pi times 2, so e to the power pi equals minus 1. And finally, w3, we take and the k equals 3, so we get that's our solution e to the power i, 3 pi over 2 equals minus i. And if we continue, if we would put uh, k equals 4, we are would be back again at w0. So this is how you find the root of a complex number. You have to be a bit careful there if you want to find the root of a complex number z. It's a kind of two-stage process. First you write z into polar form, then you write w into polar form, compute w to the power n, compare norms and arguments and solve, and you will uh, always find uh, more than one solution, because as you see, a root is a so-called multi-valued function. You get for one input more than one output.